Hello everyone and welcome to another C Sharp tutorial series. In this series we're going to be covering collections and um, all sorts of lists and arrays. So the first thing we're going to start out with though is the concept of an array. So let's jump right in. We actually have one right here that we can take a look at. So we have the data type which is a string and we have these brackets here that represent that it is an array. An array is essentially just a list. Um, so let's take a look on how we can build one. So let's start easy with a nice integer data type and then we can make an array like that. And we can say my numbers and we can declare it by putting these, or excuse me, initialize it by putting these curly braces right here and we can just start throwing out numbers. Okay, so we have four numbers here. Um, they are, oops, excuse me, my numbers, bad naming. So now that we have our array, which is my numbers, um, and again, this is, it's simply just the data type. The brackets here represent that it's a list, and then here are the values um, stored inside of this list. So how do we access this? Well, let's take a look at a nice little visual aid. So this is actually taken from um, a website. I forgot the name. I'll find it and put it in the description. Um, but anyways, so um, we have an array. In this case, it's my numbers, right? And we can access it by specifying the index, right? Index of the element to be accessed. So this start, the index starts at zero. So for instance, this is place number zero, place number one, place number two, place number three. So if we wanted, we can actually, here we go. So now it adds up. So zero is in the zero, one is in the one, two is in the two, three is in the three, four is in the four. Okay. So let's take a look at this again. So if we were to access one specific element, um, we would have to specify the index. All right. So let's do this by saying console dot right line and then specifying my numbers and then we would just specify the index. So in this case it would be, let's do two. All right. And again, this is going to be the third actual place. So one, two, three, third place, but it's the second index. So let's go. And there we go. We see the number two. So what if this was 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14? What would happen then? Let's do three. Oops. Sorry about that. We would see 13. Okay. And if we put zero down, we would see, of course, the first index. Oops. Sorry about that. We'd see, of course, the first index, which is 10. There we go. And so that is essentially an array, how we can access an array. Um, but what if we want to see all of the values? There might be an instance where we need to actually see every single value. So this is where the for loop comes into play. So we can say var i equals zero as we have. Um, i is less than, here we go. We typically would put 10 here. But um, why is that a bad idea? Because we only have five numbers. So what we can do is we can say i is less than the, we can actually, we can put five if we want to. That's okay, it works. However, why is this not optimal? Well, it's because if I add another one, let's say 15, or excuse me, 15, then this is automatically out of date and we need to update it. So instead of saying, specifying a specific number, we can simply say my numbers 
dot length. And so now we have the specific length, no matter how big or small it gets. All right. And then if we simply say I plus plus to specify we're going over one individually. All right. Okay. All right. So um, now we can simply put console right line and now what we were doing was we were specifying the specific index we want to get however as we know this for loop will fire every single time um, for for every single number that is there so if we want to start at the zero index right here what would we have to put in here well, we already have a number um, that increments with every single loop. So in here, we would actually put i because i represents an integer. And this integer is starting at 0. And we can make the start wherever it wants. But we're starting at 0 because that's the first index. And then it's going to be the length of the numbers. And then, or it's going to be less than the length of the numbers. So it will stop when it needs to. And then it will grab every single number in between because we're only incrementing by one. All right. Now we're saying console right line, my numbers, and then we're putting this in the spot of the index. So when it equals zero, this will be zero. It'll go again, and then it will be one. We'll actually set a breakpoint right here to watch it um, fire every single time. All right. Breakpoint hit, let's take a look. I is zero, we run it again. I, I is one, run it again. I is two, run it again. See how it's incrementing? I is three, and uh, we're grabbing every single one. Let's take a look. Yep, see it's printing out every single one in between. Let's uh, go ahead and close these as well. All right. So it's grabbing every single one we need. Oops. And as we continue, I is five. All right. So 14 and 15. Let's take a look. Boom. So there it is. We have grabbed every single one. We have seen that the for loop grabs every single um, specific number um, by using this variable right here. All right, well, that's the hard way. So let's now grab it the easy way. So we can actually just completely rip out this for loop and we can say for each, all right? And in this for each loop, we can say for each, create a variable, call it number for each number in my numbers. Oops. We can go console dot right line number. Wow. Look at that. We have completely obliterated all of the um, the technical difficulties we could have with a for loop and now we are running nicely with a for each loop and it did the exact same thing. Very simple, very clean. So of course the for each loop when iterating through a um, an array is clearly the best choice. Well again this is for each individual one if you want to see each specific um, list item a for loop again you have more functionality you can set it to iterate for every other one or you can start at a specific index or whatever but if you're just running through and want to see every single item in the list a for each loop is fantastic and it works wonders so that has been the lesson on arrays what they are and how we can access their elements um, join me in the next video and we're going to take a look at lists and we're going to take a look at 
a little bit more functionality we have um, with using lists and what we can dive into a little deeper. So I look forward to seeing you in that one.